and welcome. You are watching UATV News with me, Ksenia Buhai. First, at this hour, the latest developments from Ukraine. Ukrainian government will introduce lockdown in January. According to Prime Minister Denish Mihal, the restrictions will come into force on January 8. They will be valid until January 24, 2021. During this period, the work of cafes, non-food stores, cinemas, fitness clubs, gyms, theaters and shopping centers will be prohibited. Restaurants and bars are allowed to work for delivery and takeaway only. All educational institutions, except for kindergartens, will also be sent on vacation. Public events will be banned. We tried to cause as few inconveniences as possible. The planned measures should be acceptable. At the end of January, we also expect the increase in the number of cases of flu. It is a respiratory disease and it could also cause pneumonia as a complication. One of our main tasks is to prevent this increase as well. The number of COVID-19 cases has slightly decreased this week compared to the previous one. In fact, tests show that fewer people contract coronavirus. Besides, we are also recording the days when there are more recovered than those who fell ill. Though the situation is complicated, there are still certain positive tendencies observed. At the same time, during a January lockdown, the public transport will operate but under the orange epidemiological zone rules. Grocery stores, banks, pharmacies, postal operators and hotels are allowed to continue working as well. The bill on the extension of the law on a special procedure for local self-government in certain districts of Donetsk and Luhansk regions is planned to be studied by Parliament next week. Our correspondent will tell why it is important to prolong this document and what steps are taken by the state to continue the peace process in Donbass. The law on the special procedure for local self-government in some districts of Donetsk and Luhansk regions is planned to be extended for another year until December the 31st, 2021. This is necessary so that the peace negotiations and the peace process could continue. In fact, it is a law on the peculiarities of local self-government in Donbass, and while these territories have not been returned to Ukraine, this should be treated as a political step, and the purpose of this step is to create a comfortable opportunity for negotiators. In other words, we demonstrate that Ukraine is ready to act within the frameworks of the obligations taken earlier. In fact, the text of the law proposes to change the figure 2020 to 2021. Despite the fact that the law on the special status of certain districts of Donetsk and Luhansk regions was approved in 2014, the parliament has repeatedly extended the validity of the document, since it has not yet entered into force. The document is necessary for the negotiation process on the settlement of the situation in Donbass. If we don't do it, then it will have a negative signal for the residents of Donbass, as well as for international partners. We want to further resolve the situation, we want the law to come into force, we will do everything for this. But it is better to do the prolongation for the last time, for the law to come into force and start working. In order for the law to come into force, local elections should be held on the separate territories of Ukraine's eastern regions. They can only take place if all demands of the Minsk Accords on security in the territories beyond Kyiv's control are fulfilled. The implementation of the Minsk agreements will make it possible to put this law into effect. Together with this law, a number of laws on amnesty and transitional justice were approved as well. The office of the Vice Prime Minister, Alexei Reznikov, is currently working on it, so the drafts are also being worked out, they should also be agreed in Minsk, at the trilateral contact group. Only after that we can talk about real implementation. Meanwhile, Ukraine is doing everything to achieve peace in the east of the country, they assure in the office of the President. During the tenure of Vladimir Zelensky, an approach to the Donbass policy changed. A couple of exchanges of the illegally detained took place. The silence regime lasts from July the 27th and allows to avoid losses among the military and civilians. Ukraine has provided citizens living in temporarily uncontrolled territories with a full social package. Applicants were given the opportunity to enter universities according to a simplified procedure. The infrastructure has also improved. 
The bridge near Stanitsa Luhanska was restored, they reconstructed and created new checkpoints. A service center is going to be opened at every checkpoint. We are going to take all the checkpoints under our control, provide the same level of service everywhere. As in this Chastia town, soon we will open a service center in Novotroetska. Next, we have the Chongar plan, and within the next year we will finish the process on all checkpoints. Everything will be done in the same way. At the same time, a new legislative framework for resolving the conflict in the Donbass is being developed in Ukraine. According to MP Oleksandr Kachura, next year they are going to present a plan to ensure the peace process. Reported by Vadim Kramer and Vlada Tsurkan, UATV News. Two Ukrainians who had been in captivity in Iraq for three years returned home. The liberation process was personally coordinated by President Volodymyr Zelensky. Entrepreneurs Yevhen Fomenkov and Oleksandr Sanpeter have been kidnapped and illegally detained in Iraq since July 2017. They were released thanks to the coordinated actions of the Office of the President, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and other government agencies. Today I can finally report successful completion of this difficult operation. I sincerely congratulate all relatives of the returned citizens. I want to assure everyone once again that the Ukrainian state will never abandon its citizens. The return of Ukrainian citizens to their homeland is always a holiday. This was preceded by a long fight for every Ukrainian who is illegally held in another state in such a hard conditions. We will always fight for every person who got in trouble outside Ukraine. This is one of the basic principles of our state policy that is kept since the beginning of Volodymyr Zelensky presidency. Up next, one can have a cup of hot tea and warm up during the cold weather there. The warming spots for the homeless have started operating in Kyiv. Besides, volunteers have also organized a shelter for those who have no place to stay at all. Our correspondents have visited one of those. One can smell baked foods here, and Kuzma the cat walks around the room. Five men live in this two-room apartment. All of them lost their homes due to various reasons and were thrown to the street. Alexander says seven years ago he had his own apartment in Kyiv. In October of 2014 I lived alone in a two-roomed flat. Those swindlers offered a lifelong maintenance agreement. I agreed and went to the notary office with them. On the way I was offered a drink and, in fact, I signed my own death warrant. I signed a document that I borrowed $55,000 to pay mortgage. On October the 26th, 2014, I was deprived of a flat. There's a lot of such stories, Ihor says. He's a volunteer. He cares about 35 homeless people. The task is not only to provide shelter, but to help restore documents or find relatives. We are convinced that if a person who faced a problem of a kind finds him or herself in relatively normal living conditions, his or her life can change. According to the Kyiv mayor's office, there are almost 5,000 homeless in the capital. Unofficially, about 20,000. In order to help them survive the winter, heating spots operate in the premises of housing offices and territorial centers of social assistance. We place our heating spot here at the entrance. We have a small first aid kit. There are paramedics here, there are masks. I see the young ladies have even brought jam. If necessary, we provide telephone services. It's all for people who need to warm up. Here people can also get warm clothes from the Bank of Things. Volunteers bring them. The clothes are clean and disinfected. In total, there are 22 heating spots in the capital. Most are open from 9 a.m. to 5 or 6 p.m. and some are working 24-7. Reported by Vadim Kramer and Dina Mazurkevich, UATV News. Ukrainian foresters are getting ready for the new year. Foresters are now inspecting the pine trees' plantations. They say that the demand for living trees this year is quite high. 
Our correspondents have visited one of the plantations in Dnipropetrovsk and found out the approximate prices of the main symbol of the new year. This year we will cut all the trees. In fact, they are already overgrown. Next year we are going to plant new pines. Before the new year season starts, foresters examine pine plantations. The trees were planted five years ago. Now it's time for them to become the main decorations of houses and offices. Forester's assistant Ruslan Zemlenny cuts dozens of pines every day before the new year. He says he does it without regret. We grow them in order to bring festive mood to people. This year foresters of Dnipropetrovsk region planted a little 30,000 New Year trees. They've sold the same amount a year ago. By the way, the Crimean pines are in great demand. They are growing together with ordinary ones. It stays longer in houses and apartments because of a longer needle. A label is attached to every tree. This is a kind of a pine passport. It indicates that the tree was cut legally. It's a label with a code which contains information about the origin of this tree, the forestry where it grew, and a variety, whether it is a common or Crimean pine. Pine prices this year will not be much higher than the previous year. A two-meter tree will cost some five and a half dollars. The peak of the season will start soon. They are rotten foresters. Besides, we hire temporary workers. We work all the time. The first New Year tree's sales will start already next week. Reported by Vadim Kramer and Natalia Husak, UATV News. Egrets, a rare species for Ukraine, remain for winter in Winnitsa region. As a rule, they do not stay in our country. But due to the abnormally warm weather, they settled on the banks of the southern Buk River during migration. Our journalists went to see the rare birds. Victor often comes to fish on the shores of the southern Bug. Once he noticed a huge flock of fearful white birds there. But still, the man managed to film them. With the help of internet, he found out that these are rare egrets. They danced like in a ballet. They flew up like that. They made some circles like that. It is very interesting to watch them. For egrets, Ukraine is a transit territory on their way to south. But due to warm weather, the birds stayed for winter in Sokolets. They settled near the river. Local residents come here to admire the birds. It fascinates you when you see this flock of white egrets when they gather. When they take off, it's very beautiful. In recent years, because of the climate changes, egrets have often been staying in areas that are unfamiliar to them, ornithologists say. These birds have never wintered here before. Although recently they were noticed in relatively northern regions of Europe, where they have never stayed before. In recent years they have appeared in Baltic states and even in Finland. Even if the winter is cold and the southern bug freezes over, people promise to take care of the flock. Even now, the villagers are already feeding the birds with fish. Reported by Vadim Kramer and Arina Kantonistova, UATV News. That was our final story this hour. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. More updates on our official website, YouTube, Facebook and Twitter pages.